Well, good morning. Welcome to our Tuesday Talent Series. Today's Tuesday, October 28th, 2024. Um, Plant Moran is our amazing sponsor of our Tuesday's Talent Series. Plant Moran is among the nation's largest accounting, tax, consulting, and wealth management firms and provides a full line of services to organizations in the following industries, manufacturing and distribution, financial services, service, healthcare, private equity, public sector, real estate, construction, and energy. This year, 2024, they are proudly celebrating 100 years. Plant Moran has a staff of more than 3,300 professionals throughout the United States with international offices in Shanghai, China, Mumbai, India, Tokyo, Japan, and Monterey, Mexico. In Colorado, Plant Moran has served its Colorado clients for more than 40 years with offices in Broomfield, Denver, and Fort Collins. Plant Moran has been recognized by a number of organizations, including Fortune Magazine, as one of the country's best places to work. For more information, visit plantmoran.com. Now to our session today, Building a Diverse Talent Pipeline. Super excited for you to spend some time today with Kim Cortez and Blair Dammerman and their amazing women in STEM activity and event that they're doing and the, the program that they really are bringing up from Denver into Northern Colorado. So we're super lucky to have them up here. Kim joined STEM Blazers as a former woman in STEM with nearly 10 years of experience in the nonprofit and public sectors. She is known for her enthusiastic leadership, advocacy skills, and commitment to data-driven programming. Kim holds a master's in environmental science and a JD with a focus on environmental law. For the past seven years, she has led workforce programs for people with disabilities. Kim is passionate about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workforce. She is, she is excited to combine her care and concern for the environment with her workforce development skills to lead the She's in Power program. Blair Dammerman brings eight years of experience in community development, program management, and leadership. With a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling, Blair has a strong, strong background in assisting individuals with disabilities in securing and maintaining meaningful employment. She has a proven track record in nonprofit management, focusing on promoting equity for underserved communities through innovative projects. Blair is dedicated to fostering collaboration, compassion, and social justice with her teams and the communities she serves. So Kim and Blair, I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, we are more than, we are so excited to be here um, to talk to you about building a diverse talent pipeline. And we also um, have a women in STEM case study um, to kind of talk more about this pipeline. Um, Kim, is there anything else you want to say about yourself before we get started? Um, I think the introduction no. said it all. Yeah, <laughs> just a lovely introduction. Thank you. Um, okay, so today we're going to chat about um, why it's important to reach talent early, um, what work-based learning is, and what the impacts um, and benefits of work-based learning partnerships um, are, and uh, talk about a case study, uh, for lack of a better word, and then we will chat briefly about how you can work with us um, at STEM Blazers. Um, so just really briefly, Stem Blazers is a nonprofit organization um, down uh, primarily down in the Denver uh, metro area. We focus on providing programming to middle and high school um, and young adults, uh, girls who uh, to excite them to explore and pursue STEM careers. Um, and we will get a little bit more in, in the weeds with our programming here um, later in the presentation. So. First, we want to just talk briefly about uh, why it's important to reach talent early. So as we all know, the older working population is starting to retire. And uh, by 2025, so just in the next few months, Gen Z is going to make up over a quarter of the global workforce. So this being said, it is important that we are reaching this talent before they are graduating high school, even before they even get into high school. So uh, schools and students are starting to prepare for their future earlier. Uh, career exploration for some students starts as early as elementary school. Um, 
if students aren't introduced to uh, industries or careers early enough, their perception of these careers is based on what they hear from others, what they see in the media, what their parents tell them, what their peers tell them, et cetera. So um, it is really important for these students to see opportunities for careers and industries early on so that they're able to see the expansiveness of the industries instead of just, um, you know, this is what an engineer is, uh, this is what a scientist is, since there are so many different options and uh, a variety of different opportunities for the students. Um, as the students, you know, plan for their careers and go through elementary school into middle school, they start to kind of fall out of interest with different careers as they age, uh, which leads to this, what we're calling the leaky pipeline. So the pipeline is there, but it is uh, leaky. So these students are falling out of these uh, different career opportunities. Um, one of the really important things about reaching talent early, like I mentioned, is defining, defining your industry early. So you're able to talk to the students about what your industry actually is. Uh, because I, like I said, students don't really have that, uh, that vast knowledge about what industry, like what that industry could mean. Um, so the key point here is that kids are starting to form opinions very young. And if you wanna be in the mix, it's important that you reach them young. Um, and I just wanted to talk briefly about choosing careers. So for our audience, if you wanna throw in the chat, um, when it comes to choosing careers, what do you think are the top influences for the upcoming working population? So what is influencing them to choose the careers that they're choosing? Or you can come off mute if you want to do that too. Well, I'll just, I'm, I'm better at talking than typing. I think it's a great question. <laughs> um, my first impression would be to say that social media is influencing where they want to go in their career path, our young okay. kids anyway. <laughs> yeah. Career growth potential and pay. <clears throat> How glamorous it seems. I like that. What prestige is defined by their family is cool. Yeah, so actually the top influencer of um, the upcoming working population choosing careers is their parents um, and their families. This is more noticeable in our continuing generation. Um, like professionals versus our first gen professionals, but it's still the top influence for both um, for both type you know both uh, types of professionals. Um, so it's parents, and then the next one is going to be their um, perceived strengths and weaknesses. So that is a huge one, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later. Um, professors and peers, I think social media can definitely fall into that category, and then um, academic abilities. So. Um, you know, what they're, what they think they're good at, what they think they um, are strong and weak at is actually above their actual academic abilities in a certain subject. Um, thanks for participating in that. Um, just really quickly, why diversity matters in the workforce. Um, we've been talking about diversity for a long time, but um, first and foremost, um, the workforce is becoming increasingly more and more diverse. Um, that is just a fact. Uh, um, uh, diversity in the workforce is linked to higher quality work, um, better decision making, greater team satisfaction, and just more equality and equity in general. Um, it's shown that inclusive teams perform 50% better than teams that are, you know, not as inclusive. Um, Companies with more diverse leadership teams tend to report higher um, revenue, innovation revenue. So 45% um, of the total revenue versus just 26% um, co are coming from those teams that are diverse and innovative. Um, also, interestingly enough, 75% of companies with diverse and inclusive decision-making teams typically exceed their financial targets. So you can see how important it is to have that diversity in, within your teams, not only in your teams, but also your leadership teams, right? Your decision-making teams. Um, also diversity improves, improves 
employee retention and engagement. Um, about 70% of workers say that they would consider looking for a new job if their employer didn't demonstrate a, a commitment to diversity. That is a huge percent. Um, the tech industry um, tends to um, tends to be affected by this dramatically each year, losing about sixteen billion dollars in turnover costs, um, which is a ton of money. <laughs> um, so, just some kind of statistics and reasons why diversity is super important. We could go on all day about why diversity is is important in the workforce. Um, uh, but I will digress and I will, um, I'm going to hand it over to Kim. She's going to talk to you about work-based learning and Kim, just let me know when you want me to flip screens for you. All right. Sounds good. So we've established that we need to reach our talent early and that having a diverse workforce is beneficial. So what is work-based learning and what does that have to do with everything? Right. Um, next slide, Blair. Thank you. So this graphic comes from the state of Colorado, and I know it's a lot of text on a graphic, which I don't always love, but I do love this continuum and the idea of a continuum and this as a tool to sort of understand work-based learning. So in Colorado, the way we conceptualize work-based learning is a continuum that goes from learning about work to learning through work to learning at work. And so learning about work is, um, you know, your career fairs, the counseling you might get in high school, um, hearing from guest speakers, engaging in tours or mentoring. Um, learning through work is this sort of in-between phase where you're doing more hands-on um, internships, apprenticeships, other other hands-on work opportunities where you're still in more of a learning capacity. And then we have ongoing learning that occurs once someone is working in a job, right? So that could be on the job training or just general employee development. And as we move along this continuum, we move from sort of more education coordinated towards led by businesses themselves. So this, this learning through work in particular is this kind of like mushy in between where education coordinated and business led really um, merge and that transition starts to occur. So the, the overall outcome, right, of engaging in work-based learning throughout this continuum is more skilled talent for businesses and more meaningful careers for students and other job seekers. Next slide, Blair. Thank you. So what are the benefits of work-based learning? We're going to start with the benefits to youth. Um, engaging in work-based learning helps students see what they're learning in school and how that actually applies on the job. This is particularly true for the sort of more technical skills that they might be learning, whether that's in high school or in a postgraduate program, postgraduate, not postgrad, postsecondary. There we go. <laughs> um, at the same time, youth get the opportunity to build uh, essential skills in a more supportive setting. So we're sort of still working with folks as if they are learning because they are, but they get to work on those essential skills like communication, teamwork, problem solving, time management, organization, showing up on time, all of those sort of um, super transferable skills. They get improved confidence. So having this sort of hands-on experience or even just direct exposure to the workplace helps increase student confidence because they can see themselves in the roles that they're being exposed to. And if they're in more of a, a that in-between phase, they can see their skills developing and picture themselves more in the workplace generally, in addition to wherever they're, they may be engaged. Youth have the opportunity to connect with different employers um, and begin to build their personal professional networks. And finally, there are benefits that continue on post-graduation. So for youth who participate in work-based learning, they report having greater job satisfaction. 
And for those who complete internships specifically, having completed an internship is linked to higher pay. But uh, next slide. Yeah, great, thanks. For businesses, this isn't just like a nice idea or a way to give back to up and coming professionals or to engage with your community. There's a really strong business case for being engaged in work-based learning. So we already mentioned some of the benefits earlier, but we're gonna dive deeper now into the business case. The first piece of this is having a well-trained workforce. Um, something that I've heard businesses talk about is getting to train sort of the blank slate. So if someone's coming directly out of school, whatever level of schooling that is, they don't have bad habits. They don't have um, things that they need to unlearn from their previous employer. You get to just sort of mold your ideal little employee. Um, <laughs> and then that that tends to result in both increased productivity from those employees and fewer mistakes. With that, um, we have workplaces that engage in work-based learning reporting higher levels of innovation. That can be because they have better access to younger talent, so younger talent's bringing new ideas. Um, it can also be because if you're spending less time correcting mistakes, then your management team has more time to dedicate to innovation. Um, Engaged employees are effective employees, right? And they stay for the long haul. Employee engagement is something that a lot of organizations really struggle with. But businesses who are engaged in work-based learning found that employees who are connected to those work-based learning opportunities are twice as engaged as their peers who are not connected. So work-based learning can be a really powerful tool for increasing your employee engagement. A work-based learning program also helps increase diversity and can be a piece of creating a more inclusive workforce. So through work-based learning programs, employers can target groups that are underrepresented in their current workforce more directly. And we're gonna talk about that more with our case study. And finally, internships are a really powerful recruitment tool. So we've got this graphic over here to the right. Um, in a survey of 3,000 college students who completed internships, 55% said that the experience made them realize they wanted to work in that field. And 26% realized they want that specific job, which is just like a wild statistic to me, <laughs> because a lot of times, I don't know, uh, some of you may have had this experience, you might do an internship in a job that you didn't even know existed before you got an internship there. And to walk away from that being like, yep, this is the job I want. Um, out of all the jobs, right, that's uh, a really powerful pipeline. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, just to really uh, hammer that point home about internships. On average, according to NACE research, and NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, 72% of, or companies offer 72% of their interns full-time employment. And of those offers, nearly 80% are accepted, which means that on average, companies can convert nearly 58% of their interns into full-time employees, which is just an astronomical number compared to any other sort of recruitment technique that you might be trying. Uh, so in short, internships specifically, but all forms of work-based learning can help create a direct pipeline for employers from the, the next generation workforce into your workplace. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Blair for a bit to talk about our Women in STEM case study at STEM Blazers. Oh, you're muted, Blair. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Um, so yeah, so we've talked about um, benefits and what workplace learning is and all that good stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, a case study on women in STEM specifically, and that is coming from our organization, STEM Brazers. Um, so why women in STEM? So quickly, I want you all, you have 10 seconds to type in the chat or name out loud um, a female inventor and what they invented.
Oh, love that, Priscilla. Okay, great. So um, there's a fun TED Talk that we use in our programs uh, to emphasize that male inventors are more well known than female inventors, um, or male with uh, male scientists uh, or people in STEM are more well known. Um, so. Females have invented some really cool things from the ice cream maker and chocolate chip cookies to the theory of radio, uh, the theory of radioactivity. I can't even say it, let alone I don't know what it means. And the discovery of stem cell isolation. So females are very um, inventive and uh, creative. Um, so why women in STEM? Um, Women make up about 35% now of the STEM workforce. Um, and that's thanks primarily to medical related occupations like um, dental assistants, nurses, um, physical therapists, uh, doctors, things like that. Um, but of that 35%, less than 15% of those women are women of color. Um, girls, uh, tend to start self-selecting out of STEM careers as early as middle school, which we kind of touched on earlier. Um, their interest in STEM related, they're interested in STEM related fields or they're undecided um, and they're learning somewhere else from like we talked about earlier, those the other influences. Um, and they really need that help with confidence to, um, to help them build that confidence so that they know that they belong and can represent this, um, this um, like this very large field um, of STEM. <clears throat> so not only are they self-selecting out in middle school, they keep selecting out as they continue to move through their, um, their education. So continuing to steward these students from middle school to high school to early adult to access to workforce is the key here um, in this pipeline. Um, I have had numerous students tell me, I'm not good at science or math, so I don't belong in STEM blazers. Um, and that is just a socially imposed narrative that gets um, continually repeated to those students. Um, and knowing that they don't have to be good at science to be a, you know, whatever, you know, it, it, it is really, really powerful for the students to see that um, when we, when we come in and talk to them uh, during our programming, just really quickly, real world impacts of like, why, why is women in STEM so important? Um, women bring a lot of benefits to the STEM workforce. Um, they, rep you know, women represent almost 50% of the world's population. Um, so representation of women in STEM and other careers is extremely important. Um, along with diverse perspectives, um, hiring and retaining women can help employers close that gender pay gap, which is a huge issue that um, companies are always trying to you know, work towards. Um, one thing that uh, Kim and I were talking about when we were uh, prepping this presentation is the um, protective and safety features uh, is um, a real world impact. So protective and safety features such as um, car safety, um, protective personal equipment, um, drug testing on male rats only, a lot of that stuff is done with men in mind. Um, so knowing that uh, that these things are designed for the average man um, lets us know that uh, these protective and safety features, um, if there was a woman involved in creating them, they may be safer, even safer um, for the general community. Um, and then as always, there's room for implicit bias. Um, so room to change implicit bias of like why women aren't in careers. Um, and help kind of change that narrative. Um, just a really quick statistic, lower performing men are frequently selected over higher performing women for mathematical work. Um, and that's something that we see in a lot of different professions, not just STEM. Um, okay, so why is all this important? What, like why, why women in STEM? What does STEM Blazers do? Why are we here? 
Um, so Symblazers um, works on a kind of pipeline or continuum, as Kim was talking about earlier, uh, where we start with our middle schoolers, um, engaging them with activities, tours, chapter meetings um, that they're able to participate in with a group of like-minded peers um, who are also primarily girls. Uh, we move into high school where they're able to explore more with also meetings, tours, but adding in that mentorship, um, job shadows, different um, activities and opportunities for uh, internships and apprenticeships and things of that nature, more, um, more honed in work-based learning. And then we have our She's in Power program that Kim is going to talk about in just a little bit, where we enhance um, that, that um, belonging even more with internships, mentorships, and networking opportunities. And all of this leads to workforce. Um, and one important thing is we that we see is that our companies that are involved in this pipeline, whether they're involved in the whole pipeline or just a piece of it, the programming, um, if they're involved in the programming, it bring, tends to bring the students back to workforce as either in that industry or with that specific company. <clears throat> um, so just really briefly, what is Simblazers? Um, so we are a, like I said, a nonprofit and we focus on uh, encouraging women and young ladies to pursue STEM careers through uh, a variety of a variety of ways. Our middle and high school programming is primarily career exploration. Uh, we bring them on industry tours where we're able to kind of um, really place them in a workspace where they're able to kind of see what it actually looks like to work there. Um, we also provide a lot of opportunities for community building uh, mentorship, role model setting, things like that, bringing in guest speakers. So we tend to hit um, most of those pieces of the continuum that Kim talked about earlier uh, with the uh, education base and then kind of in the middle where we're partnering business and education together. And then when it comes to She's in power, that's where it kind of hits the more business led piece. And Kim's going to talk about She's in power a little bit. Yeah. So She's in power is my program within STEM Blazers. Um, and this is our 18 plus program. So many of the participants are college students, but not all of them. It's a program that's available to anyone over 18. We have sort of this three pronged stool approach to the program. The first is a paid internship experience. And we're focused right now specifically on clean energy um, within STEM. So a paid internship in clean energy. All of our interns are matched with a mentor. So they get one-to-one -one mentorship from a professional within the clean energy clean energy field. And then we operate the program as a cohort and we run it three times a year. And during each cohort, we offer professional development opportunities throughout the cohort. So that can be some other work-based learning type experiences like um, industry tours or guest speakers. And we also offer other forms of professional development, whether that's talks on um, imposter syndrome or um, resume and interview skills, things like that. Um, we're located primarily in Northern Colorado for the She's in Power program, but also in Metro Denver. And earlier we talked about the sort of pipeline from internship to full-time employee and um, around nationally around 70% of internships get uh, become offers for employment. And for our program, we have 80% of our projects get extended um, into either just a second semester or into a full-time position. So we think that means that we're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> We thought we would um, share what has worked for some of our company partners to um, 
engage both in work-based learning and to sort of um, foster diversity in their workforce. Um, one of those is connecting their employee resource groups to different schools or to other community partners like STEM Blazers. Something we do in the She's Empower program sometimes is add the mentoring piece to existing internship programs. So the addition of a mentor can be really powerful when it comes to that confidence building and the sort of essential skills development. Uh, encouraging volunteer engagement amongst their team members in general. Uh, getting buy-in from higher ups in the company is obviously huge. Um, if there is support sort of from the top for work-based learning, for diversifying the workforce, um, then that trickles down and has a real impact on their workforce development. And in general, this could be, you know, a whole series of talks on its own, but fostering a culture of inclusivity and belonging. Um, it's one thing to get people through the door. It's a whole other thing to make sure that they feel welcome in your workplace. And so not losing that piece of your overall workplace culture is important too. Uh, next slide. And so with that, if you're like, wow, STEM Blazers sounds like the coolest because it is, and you're interested in working <laughs> with us, um, we thought we would just finish with a few different opportunities. Uh, so one is to be a guest speaker for our middle or high school students. Um, you can become a mentor. We have mentorship both for high school students and through the She's in Power program for our adult participants. Uh, host an industry tour. We love to come check out your workplace and share that with our participants. And if you're in the clean energy space, hire an intern. We would love to have you hire someone. Um, we get great talent and we would love to connect you. Uh, we've got Blair's program or Blair's contact information up on the slide if you are interested. And with that, I think that's the end of our presentation and we're open to any questions. Well, does anybody, Heather, do you have any questions? I actually put it in the chat, but I can oh. ask it out loud. Um, and I just wanted to know, does STEM Blazers, uh, She's in Power, offer any type of financial support to employers so that they can offer a paid versus an unpaid internship? Yeah, that's a great question. So an expectation of our employers now is that all of the internships be paid. Um, we occasionally, through our university partners, have matching funds from donors that help um, offset some of the costs to a company. Um, but in general, when we're talking with employers, we talk to them about offering a, a paid position. And then if we're able to offer supplemental funding, we can, um, we'll come in with that after. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, I see a question from Priscilla. What majors do your students typically end up going into? Um, great question. Uh, we have as far as the um, high school, middle school, high school programming goes, uh, we have a lot of uh, students that go on to attend School of Mines for um, different types of engineering. Um, we have uh, some aerospace folks um, as well, and um, a lot of uh, marketing and like communications for different STEM companies actually um, is a very big space where um, some of our uh, talent ends up. And um, most recently, one of the industries that is sticking out is um, the construction industry. So um, project managing, um, you know, construction engineering, structural engineering, things like that, um, kind of getting into that space, which is as we maybe all hopefully know, is primarily a male dominated uh, workspace. So that's a really cool uh, spot where a lot of our um, young ladies are really interested in being a part of because it's really hands on and um, interactive and they really they tend to enjoy those um, types of roles. <clears throat> so the answer to your question, Priscilla, is 
a lot. They're, they're a, ver- a variety. Um, and we, we try really hard to introduce our girls to um, not only different industries, but also different pathways to get there. Um, there are a lot of professionals that we have come in to be guest speakers who have non-traditional pathways to, to, to where they are um, in their profession. And it's really, uh, it's really impactful for our students to see that just because they start somewhere doesn't mean they have to end there. Um, oh, sorry, Yvonne, were you? Gonna... Oh, go ahead. Um, um, so I love that you that you talk about mentorship several times during your talk because that is such a huge part of work based learning from the very beginning all the way through registered apprenticeship that mentorship component. And um, since that is such a focus of your organization, do you offer um, any sort of training support to employers, such as classes or materials, workshops? So um, for them, if they want to add mentorship to their work-based learning opportunities or become a mentor, what type of uh, resources, uh, support do you provide to employers? Yeah, I love that question. Um, right now within the She's in Power program, we offer training throughout the cohort to the mentors for that cohort with an emphasis on sort of um, helping give them some support and ideas around what might be the most useful areas to target from a mentoring perspective based on where um, our participants are in the arc of the cohort. We don't, at least not through Season Power, and I don't think through STEM Blazers, offer anything. Okay, (laughs) I'm new to my role, so I didn't want to misspeak. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We don't offer anything directly to companies, but I love that idea. Uh, So I might steal that and pass it on to (laughs) Wendy. (laughs) But um, I think that some of the training that we are offering through Season Power could be um, repurposed for that, for sure. Yeah, that was going to be my question. So yay, Heather, <laughs> so that people can think about, you know, becoming a mentor. It seems it's a little overwhelming to, you know, that there's a training, which I think is great. And then I wondered, I know host tours are probably more in employer places, but I would offer that um, if you'd like to have them come and it won't be a big tour, we're not really big here, but the Fort Collins Chamber and just the role of chambers and business. And, you know, I, I just think um, when you're a new business person, sometimes that's so successful to sign up with the chamber pretty early in your business. And so we also um, work with closely the Latino chamber here in Fort, in Northern Colorado. Mm-hmm. And so um, if there's a connection that we can make to that chamber, let us know um, as well. I'm sure they have quite a few folks that would love to come and present and maybe you already know them, but yeah. I offer that. And if you have a particular industry that you're not finding as you're coming up here, though, you have the powerhouse and all the, you know, all the stuff from CSU, but if there are other industries, please feel free to reach out to us here at the chamber. We probably know them or know somebody who knows them and we can, you know, help make that introduction for you. That's great. Thank you for that. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think that I think doing a tour at the chamber would be really cool. Um, a lot of our students, actually, our younger students, are interested in that business. They're very business mindseted. Uh, mindseted. Uh, they have a very business mindset, um, and it's it's really incredible to kind of watch them, uh, like have their ideas spark um, about different like entrepreneurial um, potentials and things like that. So. Great. And if, if that would be a focus and you again, wanted someone to come and speak, we've got some uh, amazing women entrepreneurs that are on our board and things like that, that we could reach out for you. So that'd be fun. Awesome. Thank you. Well, if there's not any other questions, this has been amazing. I loved all of the um, pre comments about why it's so important to do this. And then your program is super amazing and great ways for people to connect and all of that. So um, we're excited to, host you today and be able to put your information out on our YouTube channel and on our website as well. So um, thank you for today. And thank you to um, Plant Moran for sponsoring this for us today. So um, hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful. Well done.